I'm a food first doctor, but I don't play supplement roulette. Today I'll show you the supplements you should never start without labs and exactly what those labs are telling you. So you fix the root causes, not just collect expensive yellow urine. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, board certified in family and obesity medicine with a master's in nutrition and functional medicine. Around here, we test, we target, then we treat. If you're about to start any of these, pause and watch this first. Iron, vitamin D, iodine or thyroid boosters like CMOS, B12, folate, D6 and niacin, magnesium, zinc and copper, selenium, calcium, potassium, vitamins A and E, and biotin. I'll also hit the non-vitamin favorites people pop without labs. Red yeast rice, berberine, creatine, ashwagandha, and kava so you know exactly what to test and why. If you're only interested in one of these, you can cut straight to that vitamin since this video has chapters or using the video description. Now let's start with iron. Order ferritin, transferrin saturation, iron, TIBC, and a CBC. If ferritin is low and transferrin saturation is low, classic iron deficiency. Think blood loss, low stomach acid, celiac, H. pylori, heavy periods. Replace iron and fix the cause. If ferritin is high but transferrin saturation is low, anemia of chronic inflammation or liver disease. Iron pills won't help and may worsen oxidative stress. Treat the inflammation. If ferritin is high and transferrin saturation is high, possible iron overload like hemochromatosis. Don't take iron. Consider HFE gene testing and liver evaluation. If ferritin looks okay but transferrin saturation is low, early deficiency or inflammation. Check CRP and look for subtle blood loss. On the CBC, microcytosis points to deficiency. But don't guess, measure. Vitamin D is powerful, but context keeps you out of trouble. Order 25 hydroxy vitamin D, calcium, PTH and magnesium. If vitamin D is low and PTH is high, that's secondary hyperparathyroidism. Replace vitamin D and ensure you have enough magnesium to activate it. If vitamin D is high and calcium is high, you're overshooting. Stop or lower the dose because kidney stones and vascular calcifications love that combo. If vitamin D is okay but you still feel off, peak at magnesium. Low magnesium makes vitamin D look lazy. Recheck in 8 to 12 weeks after any dose change. Before anyone reaches for iodine or CMOS for thyroid, run a thyroid panel. TSH, free T4, free T3, anti-TPO, and anti-TG antibodies. If TSH is high and free T4 is low, primary hypothyroidism. Iodine is not the fix and can worsen autoimmunity. If TSH is low and free T3, free T4 are high, hyperthyroidism. Iodine can pour gasoline on that fire. If thyroid antibodies are positive, Hashimoto's pattern. Megadose iodine or seaweed snacks can trigger flares. If you're normal but symptomatic, look at sleep, stress, iron, selenium status, and insulin resistance. The root cause stuff supplements can't outperform. B vitamins need precision. Check B12 plus methylmalonic acid, abbreviated MMA, and homocysteine. If B12 is low and MMA and homocysteine are high, that's true B12 deficiency. Think absorption issues like pernicious anemia and use methyl or hydroxy B12. If homocysteine is high but B12 and MMA are okay, consider folate or B6 support. Methyl, folate, and modest B6 can help. If you're taking huge B6 dosages and get numbness or tingling, think B6 toxicity. High dose pyridoxine can injure nerves. If B12 is sky high from supplements but MMA and homocysteine are normal, you're replete. You don't need megadosages. Now magnesium is a hero with fine print. Serum magnesium and when possible RBC magnesium give a fuller picture. If levels are low and you have cramps, poor sleep, or constipation, magnesium glycinate or malate usually land gently. If your EGFR is reduced, especially under 45, skip the big dosages. Magnesium can accumulate and slow reflexes or affect the heart. Magnesium citrate moves bowels but can cause diarrhea. 
Magnesium oxide is cheap and poorly absorbed. Recheck levels if symptoms persist or kidneys are borderline. Now, zinc and copper dance together. If you've been sucking on zinc lozenges all winter, check zinc, copper, and ceruloplasmin. Low copper with anemia or neuropathy plus a history of high dose zinc means you likely created copper deficiency. Stop the excess zinc. Add copper and rebalance. If zinc is low with loss of taste or hair shedding, short measured zinc repletion helps, but never forever without labs. Selenium's window is narrow. It's essential for thyroid hormone activation, but too much causes brittle nails, hair loss, and a garlic breath odor you did not order. And if you're eating Brazil nuts like vitamins, remember their selenium content swings wildly. If you supplement regularly, consider a selenium level. Keep intake sane and steady. Red yeast rice is marketed as natural, but it's a lovastatin cousin. Treat it like a drug. Get baseline and follow up lipids, liver enzymes, and CK if you develop muscle pain. And contaminants like citronine show up in low quality products. Okay, if you're already on a statin or meds that interact, don't stack it. Niacin lowers triglycerides and raise HDL, but you must monitor. If you use higher dosages, check liver enzymes, fasting glucose or A1C, and uric acid. If liver enzymes spike, glycemia worsens or galatax increase, dial back or stop. Immediate release causes flushing. Sustained release increases liver stress. Respect the trade-offs. Calcium isn't more is better. If calcium is high and PTH is high, think primary hyperparathyroidism. Calcium pills won't fix that. If calcium is high and PTH is low, over-supplemented vitamin D, certain cancers, or granulomatous disease, stop the D and calcium and evaluate. Kidney stone history? Consider a 24-hour urine calcium. For your bones, prioritize protein, resistance training, vitamin D and vitamin K2, magnesium, and metabolic health. Tablets are a supporting actor, not the star. Potassium is never a do-it-yourself. Get a basic metabolic panel. If potassium runs high over 5.0, avoid supplements, especially if you're on ACE inhibitors, ARBs, or spironolactone, or if your kidneys are struggling. If potassium is low, often from diuretics, vomiting, or very low insulin states, replace carefully and fix the cause. Food sources and better insulin sensitivity move potassium back into cells more safely than blind pills. Herbal doesn't mean harmless. Ashwagandha can nudge thyroid hormones up. If you feel jittery, check a thyroid panel and consider stopping. It can rarely stress the liver. Baseline and follow-up liver function tests are wise if you use it regularly. Kava calms but can be linked to liver injury in susceptible people. Avoid mixing with alcohol or sedatives. And check liver function tests if fatigue, itching, or dark urine appear. Always tell your care team before surgery. Some herbs affect bleeding and sedation. High-dose fat solubles deserve respect. Chronic high vitamin A can injure liver and bone and is unsafe in pregnancy. If you're using retinol-heavy supplements and feel head pressure, dry skin, or bone pain, stop and check liver function tests. Vitamin E in big dosages can increase bleeding risk and interact with blood thinners. If you're on warfarin, keep your clinician in the loop and don't freelance the dose. Biotin can break your labs without breaking your health. Dosages at or around 5 to 10 milligrams, those hair, skin, nail capsules, can make the thyroid and even heart troponin tests read falsely normal or abnormal. So you should stop biotin at least 48 to 72 hours before blood work. Longer if your lab advises it. So your numbers tell the truth. For my low-carbon carnivore crew, two nuances. Creatine is generally safe and helpful for strength and cognition, but it can raise serum creatinine without harming kidneys. If the number spooks your clinician, ask for a cystatin C and an EGFR based on that for a cleaner kidney picture. And electrolytes, when insulin falls, you pee out sodium and water. Instead of megadosing random salts, pay attention to your blood pressure dizziness, and cramps. Start with adding adequate salt and fluids, consider magnesium if needed, and get a basic metabolic panel if symptoms persist. That's the clinic rule I live by. If the symptom is fatigue, you don't reach for energy vitamins. You ask why? Iron deficiency, B12 or folate gaps, thyroid issues, cortisol rhythm, sleep apnea, depression, meds, mitochondria drag, if the symptom is cramps, 
We consider hydration, sodium, magnesium, potassium, diuretics, and kidney function. If the symptom is hair loss, we screen thyroid, iron, zinc, copper balance, stress load, and protein intake. The supplement should be the last step, not the first impulse. Quick safety lap. Supplements interact with blood thinners, blood pressure meds, diabetes meds, thyroid meds, and antidepressants. They also vary wildly in quality. Look for third-party testing, sane dosages, and simple labels you can read without the help of Rosetta Stone. Then, labs, plan, action, recheck. That's how we protect our nest. Climb the rope and get you back to vibrant health without a pantry full of half-empty bottles. If this brought you clarity, tap like, hit subscribe, and tell me in the comments which lab first lesson surprised you most. I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, food first, lab second, then smart supplementation. I'll see you in the next video.